Hi, I'm Sandy Peterson. And part of what makes me the man I am today is that when I was a kid, my dad would take me to see lots of movies, but not just any movies. I mean, we saw lots of types of movies, but he really liked science fiction movies. Now, in those days, movies hadn't actually been subdivided into a million genres. They're kind of all, like all the movies I liked, whether it was Godzilla or vampires or undead or uh, science fiction or spaceships, all that was the same category, kind of monster movie stuff. That was all considered the same groups. So my dad would take me to all these things. Now, when I was 10, my dad took me to see the movie Planet of the Vampires. In a, uh, in a theater. Oh boy, you know, a planet and vampires. Now, I was so scared, I actually crawled under the theater seat to hide. But boy, did I remember that film. Now, there's not actually any vampires in it. We'll get into that later. But there's undead horrors, that's for sure. Now, not much later, uh, I was watching late night TV. Now, every night at 11.45, Nightmare Theater would come on in my town and there'd be a double feature of scary movies. So I'd be, here's a little kid, 10, 11 years old, staying up till 3 a.m. watching monster movies. What a life, right? So I'm staying up and this movie comes on called Kaltiki, The Immortal Monster. Well, the title sounded good. I watched it and I was, again, I was terrified and deeply impressed. A blob movie. I'd never, I hadn't seen The Blob at this time, though it had barely been released. Now, others of my favorite movies growing up were Black Sunday. It was black and white. It had a living corpse in a coffin of vampires that could only be killed by staking them through the eye and this ancient curse. And oh my gosh, I love Black Sunday. And I saw this movie, um, Black Sabbath. Now, Black Sabbath I saw in the theaters, and Black Sabbath was kind of cool because it was my, one of my first anthology movies I'd seen, which is a movie that has three or four different short stories that it shows all together, like a short story collection except in the movie. So I saw Black Sabbath, and the first one was good, and the last one with Boris Karloff uh, is great, and the middle sequence, which is called A Drop of Water, uh, is one of my top ten most frightening film sequences of all time. It's only about half an hour long, but man, that drop of water is good. Another movie that I really liked when I was a kid, and this is coming to a point, don't worry, is Baron Blood. I liked Baron Blood a lot. I saw it when I was 14. It impressed me so much that I wanted to dress up as Baron Blood for Halloween. Um, of course, nobody would have known who I was, but I would have, that's what mattered. So that's my childhood. I liked lots of other movies too, but these five movies, Planet of the Vampires, Kaltiki, Black Sabbath, Black Sunday, and Baron Blood really hit home. And most of my friends hadn't seen any of these. They were like obscure to them. They, they, I mean, they knew about the Wolfman and the Mummy and stuff, but Baron Blood, what's he? You know, but I knew about him and boy, I liked him. Now in the 1960s, the only way you could see a movie was to go to the theater when it was on, you know, be showing, or catch it in late night. A lot of these older movies never showed up at late night theater. I mean, Kaltiki did, that's how I saw it. You know, Black Sunday did, that's where I saw it, but a lot never did. So for example, I mentioned that I'd never seen The Blob. Well, I'd never seen it because it never showed up on late night TV. And of course, they were, it wasn't going to be shown in theaters because it was an older movie. Same is true of Creatures of the Black Lagoon. I never saw Creatures of the Black Lagoon. I never saw it growing up at all. Now, I was I knew about these movies. I'd heard about them. A babysitter told me about The Blob. I thought it sounded great. Uh, Creatures of the Black Lagoon appeared in all my film magazine books, like Famous Monsters of Film. And boy, I wanted to see Creatures of the Black Lagoon. I did manage to catch um, the third Creature of the Black Lagoon movie, which is probably the worst, but you know, it was what it was. Um, so I always pined after these movies I hadn't seen that sounded really interesting that never showed up on TV. Now, my dream as a kid that was that one day I would be so rich I could own my own film projector and get these movies and sh finally enjoy them. Well, in the 1970s, the first home video machine started coming out and I was really excited. Of course, since I was interested in really obscure movies, they didn't become available for a while, but eventually I managed to track these down just about the time that these were actually moving onto DVD. It took that long. Now, so I finally managed to obtain and get a copy of Planet of the Vampires. Now, as a kid, while I knew actors sometimes, I'd say, oh, look, it's John Wayne. You know, it's Lee Marvin. I, I never paid attention to the director, except for Hitchcock. But directors didn't matter. I mean, I guess I kind of thought that movies grew on trees. This is ironic because, of course, uh, as a game designer, I'm very keen on people knowing who designs games. And a lot of people, again, they just say, oh, it's by Fantasy Flight. It's by Seam. They don't 
notice the designer, but I do now, and I wish I had then. So, so an adult, I thought that knowing the director of a movie would be useful. So I looked up who the director was of Planet of the Vampires, and his name was Mario Bava. Well, the next one I got was Baron Blood. Oh yeah, I finally got Baron Blood. Who directed this? And it was also Mario Bava. I got Black Sunday, Mario Bava, got Black Sabbath, Mario Bava. And there's four of those five movies as a kid that I really, really made a mech out of that were obscure, hard to find, kind of like Lovecraft in the day. And they were all by Mario Bava. Huh, pretty cool. How about Kaltiki, which was really influential to me. Um, and Kaltiki, ah, it's by Ricardo Freda. Okay, not Mario Bava, so he's not the only guy. But then I researched uh, Kaltiki and found out that Actually, only the first couple days are by Ricardo Freda. And what had happened is Ricardo Freda had, Mario Bava was like a cinematographer, a special effects guy, and Ricardo Freda faked being sick after a few days to force Mario Bava to become the director and finish the movie because Freda thought Mario Bava would be a fabulous director and he wanted to force him into directing it. Now, this kind of humility on the part of a movie guy is really unusual. Ricardo Freda must have been a very interesting man. Um, now, Mario Bava, uh, after getting to start directing really on Kaltiki, was an Italian director. He preferred to work with a small budget because the, like, the film studios didn't interfere with him. And he was able to use a small budget well because he was very good at special effects. Now, he was originally... Um, a cinematographer like, and a special effects technician, and he was basically bullied into being a director by Ricardo Freda, to whom I am very grateful. Now, he did a lot of movies outside the fantastic genre. He did romances and comedies and crime dramas and sports movies and westerns and Hercules movies. By the way, his, movie, his Hercules movie is great. It's Hercules in the Haunted World, starring Christopher Lee, my favorite Hercules movie. But, but his core, and the reason he's known today at all is because of his horror movies. So, what did he do that was so amazing? Well, first, I'm going to talk a little bit about film theory. Now, most people recognize that some of the greatest cinematography, some of the greatest images in movies are from black and white films. Such striking and memorable scenes you have in Citizen Kane and White Heat and these things. Uh, and uh, modern movies are good, you know. But they're often not, usually they're great, not so much because of a single scene's amazing composition and chiaroscuro, but because they have really good dialogue, they have moving shots, they have good effects, there's, the, you know, there's lighting, you know. But the idea is, why don't we have these really, really super striking scenes like they used to have? And the answer was, at least in the 70s and 80s, that because, and it's very simple, black and white, it's easier to compose a really striking scene. With color, there's so many other things you can do that it's hard to compose such an image. Now, there's exceptions. Um, I'd say that Spielberg's movie, The Color Purple, pulls off the feat of making color be really striking. I would say that Akira Kurosawa's Dreams movie and, some of, and Ron, some of his others, pull off this feat and make color look really impressive. And other directors are starting to do this to an extent, but Spielberg and Kurosawa and these guys are only starting to do this in the 1980s. Mario Bava had already done it in the early 1960s. One of the things that strikes me about Mario Bava is that when you freeze frame a Bava movie on any image, it's always a picture that's suitable for framing or a poster. They're beautifully composed. He was really uh, amazing in the composition of his scenes. But there's more to Mario Bava being great. Now, there's an Italian film genre called a giallo which I recommend highly. Now, a giallo, it's G-I-A-L-L-O, -L -L which means yellow. Who knows why? This is a little bit like a slasher movie, but not quite. In a giallo, the killer is not known to the viewer during most of the movie. At the very end, it's revealed in the big surprise. Uh, the killer is usually killing people that you don't want to have killed because they were going to explain the plot or something, and you're interested in them, but there's someone you like, whereas in a slasher, you're kind of almost rooting the killer on, you know, nothing wrong with dead teenagers. Go get them, Jason. But as Jallo, it's not the same. You're kind of upset at the killer. Uh, the killer seems actually insane. Uh, one of the most famous Jallos, Deep Red, the killer, to work himself up into the killing frenzy, plays a, uh, 
a, um, a cassette tape of a children's song that sings. So when you hear this children's song going off, da la la, then you know the killer's nearby, it's scary, and the killer seems, seems like sick and demented. Uh, there's always a big twist to the giallo that is, that, that is cool, hopefully in a good giallo, and it's interesting. And so, at, and again, they're beautifully filmed. And so giallos are like, um, the thinking man slasher in a sense. They're not really a slasher because it's not about body count, though there can be quite a few bodies. They're really gory, they're generally quite sexy. You know, the demented killer, there's the twist, all this stuff, the mystery plot going on. Um, and all this is put together to make what we call a giallo. I really like giallos. I think you should check them out. Uh, Dario Argento, one of the most famous modern horror directors from Italy, uh, kind of made his nut doing mostly giallos. He did a few supernatural things like um, Inferno and Suspiria, but mostly it's giallos. Now, the reason I've explained this in such detail is because Mario Bava actually invented the giallo with his movie, The Girl Who Knew Too Much. And then uh, one year later, he followed up with a movie called Blood and Black Lace. Now, the Girl Who Knew Much is mostly suspense. It's not necessarily a full-on giallo. If that had been the only one, it wouldn't have spawned the genre. But Blood and Black Lace is a giallo. And it doesn't just creep slowly into the thing. It's a first primitive giallo, like Girl Who Knew Too Much. It's, he presents it full-blown with all the features of a mature giallo. The plot twist, the sick hero, the horrific killings, the, the helplessness of the police, the twist. It's a plus, it's just a beautiful movie. Um, it's gorgeous to watch. I've shown this to film students and they're just blown away by what Baba did with this. Now, I've sort of compared giallos to slashers with the idea that giallos are better. And I do think giallos are more fun usually, but I can enjoy a good slasher. Admittedly, there's not like a ton of good slashers, but I can enjoy them. But here's the nub. While Mario Baba didn't actually invent the slasher movie, that honor goes to Herschel Gordon Lewis. He did make the very first good slasher movie. It's sometimes called Twitch of the Death Nerve or Bay of Blood. So if you like slashers, Bob is the guy that invented them. Also, I will say the Twitch of the Death Nerve is <laughs> actually pretty hilarious in a morbid sort of way. Um, now, going back to, uh, to Bava, uh, another thing he invented, there's a, uh, a thing that is way overdone, which is the found footage movies. We kind of often claim that it started with uh, Blair Witch and it's been used a lot, but Bava did the first movie to use found footage effectively. And that was Kaltiki. Now, Kaltiki isn't an hour and a half of found footage. There's like five minutes of found footage in it. But before Bava, there was other movies where people would see a movie within it done by someone, but the directors always had the footage, the amateur, the supposed amateur footage filmed the same way that the rest of the movie is filmed. So it doesn't seem really like found footage. It's just like another movie within a movie. But Bava in Kaltiki, they recovered this, this, uh, this home movie footage from some dead people and they're watching it and it looks, it's found footage, it's, it's jerky, it moves around, it cuts away from the things you wanna see at just the most critical moment. It's like regular found footage and this had never been done before. Apparently it really blew people away in the 50s, when the 1957 when this movie came out. So here's Mario Baba, you know, he invented the art of making color movies look good and staged and he has copied a lot. There's many modern movies that you, you see a movie now that has colored lighting, you know, blue or purple or blue lights. They got that from Bava. Um, he's, he's often referenced by people that, that know and care about movies. He invented the Giallo. He invented the slasher movie. He invented found footage. And in Kaltiki also, he has this great Lovecraftian monster. There's a Mayan curse that brings it down along with the comet and it comes out and eats everyone. And it's remarkably gory for a 50s movie. So very much Lovecraft. So that's Mario Bava. I recommend anything by him pretty much. Uh, I will say that if you're watching one of his Westerns or comedies, you're not gonna get, I mean, it'll still be beautifully composed, but it's not gonna have the same impact if you're a fantasy movie guy like me as the fantasy movies. But I really like him. Check him out. I think you will like him too if you're anything like me.